I'm super excited to start painting this portrait because I think this photo is just amazing. That, that lift and looking up and these lovely highlights. And because he's got such brilliant cheekbones, it's really angular, I thought I would do a lot of the underpainting with a flat brush. Not something I usually do, but isn't that a good thing to do? Because it will make me paint differently. So I am starting with a purple underdrawing or underpainting, I should say. And this is counterintuitive, but works because that purple, when we put lots of yellow on top, you can see masses of yellow in his face. When we do that, it will neutralize that purple and create beautiful tones of brown, but it will shine through and give us such fascinating tones. You see, we need to watch where we put it. We wouldn't want it on his white shirt, for example, but um, under the beard, the shadows, all those places absolutely spot on. And I'm just carving round with my flat brush just to enjoy those, those marks on a really dark, juicy background. Watercolour, it's often thought of being a little insipid, which isn't fair at all, but um, we're really going to go against that. Some of the smaller areas, I might have to change my brush. Let's see how much I can get going in with, with this larger brush. The drawing is being done, has been done on an A4 piece of 140 pound watercolour paper. It's a knot surface, so that's cold press. It's Bockingford, which is a paper I'm particularly fond of. I've drawn it freehand as it happens, but I have absolutely no issue with using a light box or tracing. I am all about enjoying the process and doing things that work for you. So being able to draw a likeness and being able to paint a painting are actually two different skill sets. Not one isn't better or worse than the other, absolutely. And it's fab if you can do them both. But if you're learning to paint and you're really struggling to get a likeness and it's taking you hours, by the time you've got the likeness, you're probably about ready to give up the painting. So in my opinion, it is better to trace, project, grid, whatever. There are all sorts of methods for getting the, the outline, the contours onto your paper. And you should just do the one that allows you to enjoy the process as much as possible. And some people, I, I'm doing this as part of a 30 days 30 Faces in 30 Days Challenge with Sketchy, which is an online art school and it's also an app that's a bit like Instagram for artists. And oh, earlier this week, I can't remember which day it actually was, one of the, the artists who are doing the, the demonstrations uh, traced. She traced her outline and she got a lot of stick actually. I was really surprised because one of the great things about sketchy is on the whole it is a really mellowed happy caring place but she got a lot of grief for having done a traced outline and yes i think it's absolute rubbish and as a rule i don't like it when people are bullying and abusive and all sorts of things but for mia who was not a dodgy painter at all. He used the camera obscura, which was like the equivalent of a a light box for for his age. Joshua Reynolds, also not a shoddy painter, he used a camera obscura too, and an awful lot of current portrait artists 
they use gridding, they use iPads, they use all sorts of things to help them as, as tools. And though I think it's wonderful to be able to, to draw, I'm going to have to swap to a smaller a pointy brush because it's just too big for the, the marks I'm trying to do now. But yeah, I, so I would absolutely encourage people to to learn to get a likeness and it is a matter of just learning and practicing. But I'd much prefer people get the bug for for painting. And they do that by having successes. I would much prefer that people trace or project or do whatever they need to get a likeness and then enjoy the painting process and once they've got their confidence that is the point at which you can really start to hone your your drawing skills rather than your painting skills as it happens i drew this freehand i have exaggerated his chin area somewhat and that's deliberate because I wanted to sort of make this bigger because he's looking up and away from us. You can see that I've been putting in this purple underpainting. I don't want to go too dark because I want this guy to not be Mr. Purple Man. But this just acts as a really cool way of getting real form and tone into the painting at an early point once we've done this let's just get a few more marks into the background we're going to let it dry this purple it's dioxazine purple is super staining and that's good in this case because we are going to be layering on top of it and therefore it will not move but we need to dry it which will sort of set this so that we can then layer on without being having any fear of this purple move absolutely show through subsequent layers that's the whole point watercolor is transparent and it's it's like stained glass so we will end up mixing those colors on the surface and i'm hoping it will be very beautiful way to tell whether your watercolor is dry or not is to use the back of your hand if it still feels cool there's still water in the paper you need to dry it further if it feels just room temperature then then that's all good okay i am using up a whole look i've got gazillions of dirty palettes so i'm using up lots of paint here so what i'm going to do now is a yellow layer which i hope is going to mellow down the purple because yellow and purple are complementary colors so they neutralize each other next to each other they zing and they are really vibrant but on top of each other they neutralize each other and we should get start to get sort of browns developing and he will stop looking quite as much like uh, um an alien start looking more like the rather gorgeous person he is so i am put again using my flat brush so i start to get those those brush marks which is what i really want to be a feature of this painting i'm going to go a bit more careful around the eye because i want to preserve the whites of his eyes some of his eyes in shadow some isn't um, and I might just have to grab my slightly smaller, pointier brush to make sure I go round that highlight, for example. And then this shadow and some of the whites of his eyes and some of the whites of his eyes is not in shadow. So I'm not covering all the purple. I'm not covering the whole paper actually there is a lot of yellow on him now with this photo i did enhance it slightly before i uh, printed it out and by enhance i just mean i i boosted the color the saturation of the color and a bit of the contrast before i printed it out and i do that simply bec because of the limitations of printers 
know if it's quite a dark photo that this was just printing it out onto ordinary printer paper you end up just getting a bit of a dark blob which is really hard to see and I'm conscious that these marks are getting very busy so I may in subsequent layers try and even some of them out by using a round brush so already my mind's kind of whirring away thinking right okay I like this I like that but oh yeah that might be going a little too far I'm going to take my smaller brush and I want to get a little bit of sienna and warmth in here because I mean he is a very yellow person but I've got some uh, burnt sienna there that I'm just going to warm things up and de-yellow him at the bottom of his lip there's quite a lot of orange and I'm going to see there's quite a lot of pink and yet another palette I'm hoping I've got some oh look some pink I'm not recommending that you work like this uh, it's just as I say hate to hate to waste paint so I have it in the palette and I'm going to jolly well use it just notice how the bottom lip catches light oh, I shouldn't have done that if you put paint down and you're not happy with it just use a bit of kitchen towel to to get shot of it yeah I was saying just notice how the bottom lip catches the light and the top lip lip is in shadow and that really kind of is counterintuitive because we kind of think oh yeah but the, the top lip is above so it must be lighter than lighter than the bottom one not the case <sighs> coming up into the temples there's more warmth under this eye under that eye often you will see more warmth on the areas that have you know high blood flow and the skin is thinner so ears tend to be a little redder temples nose often cheeks those sorts of places of course the other place where you see pink or red the corners of the eye a little round his nose here quite like having can you see where i've got the warm just joining those areas i think that is going to work in my favor we need to let that dry now this is probably a good time to remove any pencil marks that you think might get in the way this is my darks layer i have got some prussian blue here this is actually warm sepia but you could use something like a oh i don't know burnt umber or something like that that's a bit of thallo blue uh, and i'm going to use those in dark areas to really carve out his face and once you get his irises in like this he won't look quite so odd now look carefully because there's some beautiful highlights on his irises they are not all dark but i'm not putting in every um eyelash i mean he's got gorgeous eyelashes but it's not the point because you can get just caught up in that detail and it will do you no favors whatsoever and we blend it across there very easy to uh, get caught in up in one particular area and fiddle at it because it's annoying you and you lose sight of of literally the bigger picture how much detail you want to put in may depend on the size of the painting that you're doing you know if this was huge i might need more detail to to sort of carry the painting um but this is a four size if you're doing a five half again well you you might leave out more oh doesn't that look better remember if you can't see it don't paint it 
so we can hardly see that second nostril it does come down like that it's more of a shadow here okay back to my flat brush and i'm going to just mix some of those paints this might get a little bit juicy to be honest so look at where some of those hairs are going what direction and just try and imply some of them again his beard and moustache definitely come out into the, the background there but we've got such a dark background that that's all going to to merge this bit of his beard is really dark this not so much wanted that lovely highlight didn't we so that helps us navigate what's going on because we've got rid of some of our pencil lines and that will just help us navigate a little now i've deliberately not gone for adding a load of black on top even though his beard is incredibly dark i just thought it might make it really boring so i hope that was a good decision equally well i am not aiming for him to look like coco the clown um i do want this to be <laughs> to be human I need to be careful here that he doesn't end up with green hair because i was putting blue over over yellow but i think that will be okay what i haven't got i've just noticed is that lovely shadow there let's come up Time for that really dark background. Now we know this is going to blend in. I really want to capture the light around the ear and that side of the neck and of course across the dome of his head. I think I am going to dry that area for sure because I don't want that edge merging in. Or do I? No, go on for goodness sakes. Right. If we need to do the background in several layers, we can. Let's be brave. Got sharp cheekbones, hasn't he got sharp cheekbones? It's getting too blue, adding in the brown to, to make it near to black. But I'm quite liking capturing a little bit of the colour. This is where it just merges in, so I'm going to take the background in to his beard because you cannot see where one starts and one stops I'm varying the directions of these strokes for well no other reason than interest i don't want them all coming out of him so that he sort of has a star round now this was the bit i was a little concerned about because it's still wet right on the edges but actually losing an edge again i think would be probably quite a positive thing right gonna carve around his ear so what i need to do is let this dry so that i can see whether it's dark enough because watercolor always dries a little bit lighter and it really needs to have that dark contrast so again it's dry and we are really at the finessing end end of things i think i want to darken this bit down i'm happy with that i want to darken that you down. know i was worried about this being wet and going into the background actually i love that just a little bit of, of feathering up so there there i'm really happy with that and why i love watercolor because it it gives you these little presents I want to sort out the dark of that nostril and possibly the dark in here his eyebrows are too solid so i'm just going to lift a titty bit and i haven't got the sharpness of that gorgeous um cheekbone there like i have here always be careful when you're lifting because it's so easy to muddy up watercolor where else is that beard catching some light because even though the beard is really dark it is catching light I'm going to have to just go around those areas and just sharpen them up because they look a little muddy at the moment. I'm going to use my big flat brush and not, hopefully not muck this up. Let's 
if you're not sure you should really test out the uh, the lightness or the darkness of the color you're using so i need to be brave just put his cheekbones in really don't want to lose the freshness and the spontaneity of this so i've got my fine pointed brush and i am just coming into his nostril um seem to have managed to lose his second nostril poor chap so let's do that but blend those lines and the last thing to do is that real dark between his lips and i'm just going to my gunji palettes that i've got off screen and seeing what earth i've got there that might make something dark enough because I see it as a sort of dark purple but I don't want to go back to that dioxazine purple it's not quite that that's going to have to be blended into his upper lip see I've got these spots of warm there I know that cadmium red is an opaque colour as far as, far as watercolour goes and I just wonder that a few touches of cadmium red in his beard might be a whole pile of fun. It has to be something pretty opaque to go across the top of this dark. And I don't want them to be too clunky. So this might lift. That is rather nice, and because it's rather nice, I'm tempted to do a lip up there, and then I need to stop because I'm actually really pleased with how that's come out, and I don't want to muck it up. So that's all dry. Now I need to take our tape off very carefully because there is nothing worse than ripping your painting right at the end if by any chance it does start to stick warm it with a hair dryer and that slightly melts the glue and it should come off if it does start to rip stop and then come back from the other direction as well so that you don't make things worse and that white board around the edge i think just sets it off especially if you're not actually going to frame it. I know it's not an exact likeness, but I think that's got a real strength to it. And I'm pretty pleased with that because, as you know, watercolour always has that reputation for being a little wishy-washy. And I don't think you can call that wishy-washy.